in order to make the van braces and the boots for Lagertha's costume. First of all, I digitised my patterns after working out sizes by looking at reference photos and also working out where the punch holes should be. So once it was complete, I printed it straight onto A4 tracing paper. I did this twice, one for each bracer. So now you want to wet your leather with a damp cloth. This means we can transfer the pattern. I've actually already textured this leather. To see how I did that, I go into more detail with the Lagertha vest tutorial. To transfer the pattern, I'm using a scribe I already have. The correct tool you would want to use is called a bradle, but this has a blunt edge and did the job. First, I score along the outlines. For the curved areas, I just do it freehand. And for the straight areas, I can use a steel rule. Once I've went around the perimeter, I can then mark over all the punch holes. So these larger circles along the side are for eyelets. This is where the bracer will be laced up. I trace right around the circle so I can line it up as best as possible. I also have rivets that I'm putting along the top. So inside each of these small circles, I just put a little dot. Note that some of the rivets are larger and some are smaller. Now for the lacing which holds the chainmail, I just put a dot inside those circles also. And then there's a lacing that holds the top part of the van brace to the main part. This part I'm doing here is for braiding along the top. And I actually later added braiding to the bottom. So I did amend my pattern before I put it on Etsy. So there's also these punch marks which are in the shape of a wave or like an S shape. This is for a special tool that I bought. If you look at Lagertha's reference photos, you'll see that the punch marks are actually in that shape. So I designed it so the punch holes go one way on the right hand side and then the other way on the left. It looked this way in the pictures. And then at the very bottom of the van brace, they all go run in one direction. However, this differs per bracer. So on one bracer, these will be going one way and on the other bracer, they'll be going the other way. But I have labelled these patterns for you to make it easier for you. Once you've transferred the van brace pattern, you'll end up with something like this. Before cutting this out, I want to show you how I did the boots also. Except for the boots, it has this snake pattern on it. Just like the van braces, tape it down first. Mark in the outline with a steel rule for the straight lines and just freehand for the curves. And then you're going to mark in all the lines of the snake pattern. They do cross and go behind each other and things like that, but just follow the lines that you see visible. Once you've done that, you can mark in all your punch marks. You've got the eyelet holes, which hold the boots together at the back. And you've got these small holes. This allows each part of the boot to get braided together. Each boot is made up of two of these sections. And I made each of the four pieces of the boot different, so it has a completely different snake pattern on each four. Once you've transferred your boot pattern and your van brace pattern, you can then cut them out. To cut out the leather pieces, I'm using a Stanley blade. You really need to make sure it's sharp before you do this, so make sure you invest in a knife sharpener. The best way to cut this is to move your body around with any curves. You want to try and cut it in one go. That way you'll get the cleanest lines that you can. I cut the curves freehand and I use a steel rule for the straight sections. Now the inside of the van braces, there needs to be chainmail there. So I'm going to completely remove that middle section. So I cut the curve first and then cut straight lines for the other parts. You'll also need to cut the van brace straight through this part that separates the top from the bottom. The boots are quite basic, so just cut around the surround of those. Now before I start punching out any holes on the boots, I really want to deal with the snake pattern. It's visible, but we're going to make it really stand out like this one I've already done. And the way I'm going to do that is use a process called beveling. You'll need to wet your leather again to make it a lot easier to shape it. Next, you want to take this tool. Surprisingly, it's called a beveler. And you can see that one side is angled higher than the other. How this works is you want to put the longer angled side into the groove that you have indented. So on the side of the snake that's further away from me, I'm putting the angled side down into the groove and then I'm hitting it with a mallet. I move along that line and what that does is it just pushes the leather down so that that line is more prominent. I then move on to another part of the snake pattern and hit that with the mallet too. It often helps to move one way and then move back the other way with the tool. After doing three of the lines, you can see that it's left a slight shadow outside the snake. That's because the shorter angled side was outside and it's made to the part inside the groove deeper. I continue doing this around the rest of the boot. 
After that whole section's done, it looks like this. Be careful not to angle the bevel inside the snake because obviously that's the part we want to stick up. We want to have steep edges on the snake part and beveled edges outside the snake. Don't be afraid to grab a scrap piece of leather just to have a practice of this to get right. For the lacing holes on the van brace, I'm just using a rotary hole punch that I have. The size of the holes I am putting in are 2.5 millimeters. I'm going to use flat lacing for this and it's actually three millimeters. I can just fit it through this hole. You might prefer making these three millimeters as it's a lot easier to lace it that way. I just preferred the look with the 2.5. It means the holes are much less visible. You can then add holes for the chain mail. They're exactly the same size. I'm also adding holes for the rivets. It's really important to know what rivets you're using because they won't always have the same size of hole. I knew in advance that mines would need roughly a 2.5 millimeter hole for the smaller rivets. The larger rivets for mine actually fit through the same size of hole, but for you it could be different. So make sure you know that in advance. Now I'm adding in the S shaped punches. I've got an S shaped tool here. And all I do is line it up roughly over the mark that I've made and hit it with the mallet. This will remove that material and leave an S or a wave shape. These holes act as part of the lacing for the chainmail on the design. And note that later on I actually added further holes for braiding at the bottom of the van brace, but I have adapted the design to make that a lot easier for you, as I had to really squeeze them into my design. So now we're adding holes for the eyelets. This has to be a lot bigger as the eyelets are where the lacing will go through to join up both sides of the van brace with some lacing. It's just a regular hole shaped punch ready for you adding your eyelet in. Again, you will need to know which size eyelet you're using if you're not doing the same as what I've done. So this is the top section complete and this is the bottom section complete. You can then punch out the holes in the boots in the same way. To dye these pieces, I'm doing pretty much exactly what I did on the vest. I take a chocolate leather dye mixed with some dye reducer. This makes the colour a lot less pigmented and I spray that on to get a warmer base colour. I spray this onto the van braces and the boots. The next dye colour I'm using is called Cordovan. It's a reddish purple brown. This top part of the van brace actually needs to be a bit darker than the main part. So I go a bit heavier with the dye without overdoing it as you don't want to get dye bleeding later. Now dyeing the main part of the bracer, I'm going in but not as heavy. You don't need to make the dye job too even, it's actually better if it's slightly uneven. When I finished both parts they looked like this. Same with the boots. I try to add the darker areas outside the snake and then lighter, leave the lighter areas in the snake. It doesn't have to be exact though, it's, some parts are show up lighter and some don't, that's just part of the design. So don't worry too much about that. I'm now adding eyelets to the boots and the van braces. To add the eyelets, all you do is put it through the hole with the circular part of the tool underneath and the long setter tool on top and hit it with the mallet. I recommend the eyelets that are one piece as I felt they were more secure. I actually installed some that had a washer and I felt they were really flimsy and I ended up removing them. To join the two parts of the boot together, I'm braiding in exactly the same way as the vest. I take a two prong lacing needle, add some three millimeter flat lacing and squeeze those together. To lace the boots, I'm using the same method as before with the vest. So you go straight through both holes through the back, go back through the X leather crosses, then go through a new hole. I want to note that I actually misaligned this, so I actually used the first hole for both of these, so you can see that one side looks a bit higher. I then went back and fixed that and redid all the braiding, but here you get the general idea, so if you follow the tutorial with the vest you can't go wrong. You always start with the first hole on one side and then go straight down to the second hole on the other side to avoid that happening. Then I bring the lacing underneath and through the back of the loops. These loops on the back should be generally straight. 
You can see that they're not straight on mine and that's because I did misalign it at the start. Your aim is to get straight loops on the back. So now we can do the edging. I'm actually putting the leather through some of the loops I've got already, trying to continue the pattern. The tail end will get hidden underneath and then continue the pattern. So I go through a hole and then back through the X. Through a hole, back through the X. And just continue that until you get to the holes where the eyelets will start. You can add the eyelets for the boots before or after this as there's enough space to do that. The trickiest part of this is how to connect each of the rows of braiding. I just try to disguise it as much as I could and look like the pattern's continuing. So once you've braided the boots together, all you need to do now is add the rivets. To install the rivets, you need to make a punch hole first. You would have already made markings where they are to be installed when you transferred the pattern. So I take the punch that got sent with the rivets and make a small hole. If you're unsure what size of hole to make for your rivets, just take a scrap piece of leather, make some random size holes and just see which fits best. So the rivets come in two parts. There's a domed part, which is the top, and then there's a part that goes underneath. So this small metal part has a slightly curved shape in it. I put the back of the rivet inside that. Then I put it through the hole I've made, put the dome on the top, and then I take the setter tool that came with the rivets. It has a domed shape inside, which matches the head shape. All I do then is hit the top of this tool with my mallet. The rivet is now set. I then go and add more rivets to the boots. To decide where these rivets go, I just looked at pictures of the boots and then just kind of decided for myself. Now that's the construction of the boots finished and we can add rivets to the van braces. So firstly, I'm using the same domed rivets. There's two on the end, then there's a space. Then there's three together, then there's a space. Then there's another three. Space, three, space, two. This is clearly noted on my pattern. For the larger rivets in the middle, I'm actually using these cone-shaped rivets that I bought. They just simply screw in, so you just take a screwdriver and screw them on. For the rivets at the end, I bought larger shaped domed rivets. They hadn't actually arrived when I went on to do the lacing, so that's why you can't see them. But I knew I didn't have to use a mallet or anything like that, I could just screw them in, so I knew I could get away with doing the lacing early. To add the chainmail to the van braces, I used the exact same premise as I did on the vest. When I laced around the perimeter, I added in rings. Although in this case, I did it for every second hole. So there'll be a ring on one part of lacing and then a space and then there'll be another ring and then a space. Then all I did was simply build up the four in one pattern by adding in rings. If you want more detail on this process, then you can watch the Lagertha vest tutorial where I go into that in a lot more depth. All I'm doing is taking open rings and attaching them by using two sets of jewellery pliers. I want to note that I actually filmed this later because in the next segment you'll see that I actually put the chainmail round the wrong way. So when you see me lacing them up you'll see that the rings are going up the way when they really should be sweeping to the side left or right. So we're lacing up the edges of the van brace in the same way as the boots. You put your leather lacing through from the back. You then put that lacing behind the tail end and round to create a loop. You go through the next hole. Then there should be an X shape created just behind that hole. You take your needle and you go through that leather lacing. You can then go through the next hole and then go back through the new X that has been created. You continue that all the way along until you get to the end. One thing with lacing that I want to note is that depending on where you start, that's where the sort of braiding will point. So I wanted one bracer to go one way and the other to go the other way so that I had a left and a right bracer. So you can see the first one there is pointing to the right. I want this new one to point to the left so I'm actually starting this from the opposite side. It's the exact same premise with this one.
Now to lace the two parts together, it is a bit tricky. So I'm not going straight across to each hole, I'm actually going at an angle. So I start on the first hole at the bottom and put that through the second hole on the top. So you can see there's a hole extra at the side of the top part. I made these diagonal because that's how it looks in the design. I continue to loosely lace towards the middle and stop as I then need to change direction and keep the top of the van brace aligned properly with the bottom. If you're not sure where the middle is on your design, just count all the holes and then basically find halfway point. I designed mine so there's an exact amount of holes on either side. To change direction, I actually need to double up into some of the holes at the top. So you can see I've taken the thread back through in the middle, creating an X shape. And then I'm going straight across at the back into the next hole at the top. Then this allows me to continue the pattern in the other direction. A tip I'll give you for doing this is to leave all your loops really loose until you've done the whole thing, then tighten. This is because it helps align it into where it should sit. And when you're tightening it, do it from the middle outwards. You'll have one hole left on either side at the top. Just put the lacing through there, bring it to the back and then finish off by putting your lacing under the loops you've got. And that will hold them in place. You can see I've actually overlapped them here just to keep it intact. I also want to make another note. I never realised that my chainmail is actually going the wrong way here. You can see mines are sweeping up the way when they should be sweeping to the left or the right. So I've now taken that all off and I've fixed it. Here is the way that they should look after I fixed it. Now your boots and your van braces are complete and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.